Hey everyone! Sorry it's been so long. I... Oh God! He's back! Yes, there's another Tarzan game! When we last saw our hero, he was ruthlessly beating monkeys to death with lemons. Just like in the movie. Wait, I don't remember that. Much as I really enjoy this game, and I honestly consider it to be one of the very best Disney movie tie-ins ever made, one might argue that its basic side-scrolling structure hinders it somewhat. Got it. While it controls well, it really amounts to little more than a straightforward platformer, and as such Tarzan's abilities are arguably not used to their full potential. There are some cool tree surfing levels dotted around, and the ones where you can actually see what's up ahead are pretty good. But if you want to exercise Tarzan's tree surfing vine swinging abilities even more, or look no further than Tarzan Freeride. Also known as Tarzan Untamed, the PS2 follow-up to its PS1 sibling. It feels like an obstacle course through the jungle, with a fairly complex set of trick moves. Here you really get to embrace being Tarzan, surfing down branches and swinging through the vines. But the question is, is this game a swinging success or a swing and a miss? The game begins with Tarzan and Jane frolicking in the jungle, which I assume is what they do every day. I mean really, what else could they possibly have in common as a couple? What was that? Their frolicking is cut short by the realisation that some baby gorillas have been locked in cages, which are easily destructible, fortunately for us. So here's the idea. Throughout the levels, you encounter encaged baby gorillas. Every time you find one, you need to take the baby to its mother. Thank goodness. Finding all the baby gorillas in a level makes them pull this adorable happy face on the level select. So just look at this cute thing. Oh, I wanna hug it. Tarzan can climb certain walls or trees, swing on vines, and also bounce on some platforms. And hippos. But although you can control Tarzan freely, every level follows a set route. And as such, Tarzan seems to automatically head down a certain path if you just push forward on the analog stick. <laughs> A major drawback is that it's not always clear what direction Tarzan is going to turn, and walking along narrow branches never feels particularly comfortable for fear of randomly falling off. Hey, check it out, Tarzan! Throughout the game, we also find these film reels. Although at this stage, we don't know what they are or what they're for, obviously. Nevertheless, Turk advises you to collect them for some reason. If you see any more, hang on to them. Won't this just weigh me down? How is he carrying them all anyway? In his loincloth? Actually, you know what? I don't want to know. As I said earlier, you can also perform various trick moves. These give you points, although ironically there's not really much point in them in the main game. They're really only of any use when you choose to play Turk's Challenges, which we'll talk about later. Although if you do manage to attain 5,000 points, you earn an extra life, which is something at least. Ah! Though I have to say, merely staying alive for the duration of a level is challenging enough for me. You can probably tell I'm not very good at this. Fortunately, bananas refill your health. Well, just about. Sweet Jesus. Just look at how minuscule the replenishment is. Banana bunches refill your health more substantially, but honestly, there's barely any point in a single bananas, you know, considering just about everything kills you. Ah! Luckily, the enemies aren't too difficult to get by. As for tougher enemies, you can wrestle them by rapidly tapping the square button. You can always spice things up a little with a spear, which can not only be used to separate vines to make them usable, but you can also disable traps and harpoon enemies from a distance. A little further along, we find Turk again, who's reaching to grab another film reel. You're not the only one with opposable thumbs in this jungle. Ah! Oh, and as you might expect, the next level sees her having to surf down the rapids to rescue her. Ow! And yes, I'm really bad at this too, apparently. I know it's a shock. And as if all the obstacles here weren't annoying enough. <laughs> Are you Turk is constantly shouting at you throughout the level. <laughs> I wouldn't mind as much if she didn't sound genuinely pissed off with me for not being better at this. Do you know what? With an attitude like that, you can go ahead and drown. See if I care. Fortunately, Tarzan manages to save Turk. Or is that unfortunately? Has anyone got a ball gag? We then find the professor, who informs us that Tantor the elephant is in trouble on the other side of the lake. I'm afraid there's no way you could get around the lake in time. Fortunately, Tarzan has a bright idea, and this poor stork finds itself in the wrong place at the wrong time as Tarzan uses it to water ski. 
You know, I really don't get why his prolific abuse of the local wildlife has never been brought up in conversation. He might be a friend to the gorillas, but he's an absolute bastard to everything else. Perhaps that explains why everything is trying to kill me. Ah! Yeah, I'm on the pig's side. Anyway, before you ask, no, I'm not very good at water skiing either. There's a theme developing here. You can perform even more tricks while water skiing, including a reverse ski. <laughs> A reverse ski? I'm having enough trouble going bloody forwards! And Tarzan's screams of agony are hilarious. <laughs> you know, as if I didn't already know that I'm bad at this game. I think you can even hear his bones cracking when he hits things. <laughs> that one hurt him! And by the way, the music of this game is pretty good. <laughs> Although parts of it randomly remind me of Quack Attack. <laughs> Does anyone else hear the similarity or is it just me? Coincidentally, this is also a game I'm not very good at. That's putting it nicely. I'm actually ducking awful. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, it means a lot. <laughs> Once we reach the shore, it turns out Tantor has got his trunk trapped in a cage. And there's an ugly bald man about to shoot him. Huh. Who ironically looks more like an ape than I do. He could be the missing link. It also happens that our as of yet unnamed main antagonist is on the scene. And he wants to capture Tarzan for scientific purposes. This is the greatest scientific discovery of our century. And my gateway to immortal fame. <laughs> oh, and he wants to make a movie about me too. No camera! No! You. <laughs> Hope he gets my good side. Anyway, we then engage in our first boss wrestle with the bald guy, Mr. Wolf. I didn't realize it was gonna be that kind of movie. The idea here is to keep tapping square until the button combination is revealed. Then, when the bar starts to refill, you need to tap those buttons to win. I love that this guy just forgot he had a gun. This fight could have been so much easier for him. Thank goodness for Disney villain stupidity. I'll see you around. Anyway, the little bad guy carelessly leaves behind another film reel, branding his name Oswald Gardner. It does sound familiar. I think Daddy knew him back in London. Wow, what are the chances? We're in a jungle in Africa and we're still bumping into people we know. Meanwhile, with his injured trunk, Tantor is convinced he's going to die soon. That's a light-hearted storyline for kids. I must make my final march to the elephant graveyard. Elephant graveyard? Uh, I think you've got the wrong Disney franchise, guys. I'm surrounded by idiots. Rather than talk him out of it, Jane decides to escort Tantor to the graveyard. We'll be fine. Well, okay then. Because that's what friends are for. Before we continue, there's something I need to explain. Every so often, a bungee bonus level opens up. If you manage to complete a dive without hitting any obstacles, you not only retrieve an extra film reel, but you also earn the respect of the gorillas. <laughs> And if you return to the main levels and happen upon a gorilla, they'll help you reach secret areas. All you have to do is walk up to them and deafen them. I really wouldn't recommend doing that in real life. I can't imagine it would go down well. There are three bungee challenges in the game. One for the gorillas, another for the young apes, and one more for the baboons in the later stages of the game. Completing these levels opens up all the paths for you to explore the jungle in its entirety. And find more of Gardner's dirty movie. <laughs> anyway, we then go looking for the professor. And this level, oh my god, I hate it. There's a section towards the end where you need to surf down a tree hollow. And I had a hard time figuring out how to maneuver him to avoid all the obstacles. Ah. Ah. Oh, for crying out loud. Is there an eight-man graveyard nearby? I'm so done with this game. It's also kind of disturbing that when you die, the little gorilla is just sitting there happily on top of your corpse. Ah. What are you smiling at, you sadistic little freak? Eventually, we find the professor, who has found a strange device. I found the strangest thing. Tarzan informs him about Gardner, and the professor urges Tarzan to save the gorillas. You have to save the apes! And yeah, we never find out what this device actually is. What was the point in that detail? What the hell is that? Some kind of monkey wrench? Gardner knows he's not supposed to use it on actual monkeys, right? Immediately afterwards, for absolutely no reason, we go water skiing again. Uh-oh. You know, you got pretty badly beaten the last time we did this. What the hell made you think it would be a good idea to do this again? Uh -oh. 
We then follow the hunter's trail as we try to find the bad guys. The hunter has become the hunted. How ironic. We eventually find them at the river where we fall into Wolf's trap. Oh. Oh, well, we tried, I guess. Bye, see you next time. Ah, but it's not over yet. Unbeknown to the villains, it turns out Tarzan is still alive. Somehow. And it's our job to wrestle the crocodile. This is a pretty dramatic level, and I have to say I like that it plays out like a movie action sequence. The animation actually looks really good. Unlike, um, whatever this was. Although I'll admit I was somewhat distracted by Tarzan's enormous nipples. Anyway, since the villains believe Tarzan to be dead, they set their sights on Jane instead. We're going to the boneyard. She's currently still accompanying Tantor to the elephant graveyard, and we need to find her. But only elephants know the way. So the professor comes up with an ingenious solution. The cameraman! The reels! Perhaps he filmed his pursuit. We may just be able to discover Jane's whereabouts from the reels of film you found. Or oh, we could just follow an elephant. I mean, it might take a while, but surely it wouldn't take as long as finding all the reels and then watching the entire movie. I'm afraid we can't proceed until we know where we're going. So anyway, now you have to backtrack and find the missing reels. And believe me, this game is not lenient. We need no less than 45 reels, which is something of a challenge, particularly when they're sometimes hard to see. Anyway, once we have enough, we can find out where Jane and Tantor are. Good show, my boy. Although why we need 45 specifically is a mystery to me. Surely most of these are useless to us. Also keep in mind this is a stationary camera, so this is literally just some footage of them walking somewhere. How the hell does this even help? Regardless, it seems Tarzan knows where to go. Again, this might just be me, but I found vines can be a little annoying. If Tarzan jumps onto a vine, he'll usually automatically start swinging. But there are also several vines that remain stationary, as they're simply used for climbing. The problem I had with this is that it can be hard to tell what vines he'll swing on. I really wish they were colour coded or something. At times I was expecting him to swing, and by force of habit I'd jump off the vine prematurely. Tarzan free ride? Free falling more like. We eventually arrive at some caves, where it's our job to once again save the baby gorillas and disable the traps with our spears. Oh my god, I just killed someone! I'm so sorry whoever you are! Uh, were? My aim is really bad apparently. Enemies here are mostly hunters, but there are also the occasional snakes, bats, and- <sighs> Fine. Roll the clip. Should Tarzan get trapped in a spider's webbing, rapidly tapping the square button will free him. Shortly after this, we get another surfing level. It isn't great, but it's a lot more bearable this time, as we don't have an annoying gorilla constantly screaming at us. Hello, child. What the hell kind of run was that? Eventually we come to a dead end, where Tantor reveals Jane has been taken by the hunters to the elephant graveyard. It must have passed the entrance. It's a stone bridge. It collapsed when I tried to cross. The only other entrance is behind this rock and it won't budge. Now this is actually kind of clever. The path to the graveyard has collapsed and we need the baboon's help to get there. So we need to complete the baboon's bungee challenge before we can continue. <laughs> Once the baboons are satisfied, if you return to the cave, they let you use them as a ladder to an alternate route, and we can make our way to Jane. He's fuck. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, Eagle Eye. This leads to the final boss wrestle against Wolf and Gardner. <laughs> Not again, guys! Please, have some restraint! <laughs> Why is this guy so huge? Maybe he really is a bald ape. Why does nobody ever call him Big Bad Wolf? That's like the perfect nickname. What a wasted opportunity. As for Gardner, he's surprisingly easy to defeat. <laughs> All you have to do is yank him into a tree and... <laughs> well, that's it. Well, I guess that's that then. There were times during this fight when I was tapping square as rapidly as I could, but the footage kept rewinding and repeating as though I was struggling. It did look quite funny though. <laughs> Call me Alan. <laughs> Alan of the Apes. 
has a nice ring to it, actually. And by the way, if you fail this wrestle, um... <laughs> Well, that doesn't look dodgy as hell at all. What the hell's going on now? Is this a fetish movie or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> With the villains crushed under piles of elephant skeletons, Tarzan, Jane, and Tantor return to base. <gasps> Tarzan! And yeah, that, that's it. No, really. There. Got it. Oh. That did the trick. The game ends very abruptly. So abruptly, in fact, that I was actually expecting another level to follow. Who knows how much film he lost, my boy? There could be a whole story out there. So now we can go back and find all 75 reels. Wait, you're telling me Gardner misplaced 75 reels of film? Why would he just leave all of your footage all over the jungle? What was the point in filming in the first place? If you manage to find all of them, you get to see Gardner's film in full, with commentary from Gardner himself. The ape man is a savage and unwieldy full of rage and loathing for all things human. Here we see an amateur explorer defending himself from attack. This isn't much, but at least you get a reward, I suppose. Hey, hang on, how did they film the camera? Witchcraft. So anyway, the main game is incredibly short. I managed to finish recording it in about two hours. It's one of the shortest games I've ever played. But if you want 100% completion, you also need to complete Turk's challenges. And while at first I found this incredibly frustrating, I have to say that this is where the game really shines. While before the trick moves were optional, here they're essential, and as frustrating as it can be, I actually wish the main game had placed more emphasis on these. <laughs> You can complete the entire main game without performing a single trick move, which neglects what I consider to be the game's primary selling point. Despite the simple button combinations, these moves are not always easy to execute, and damn it feels good when you pull it off. <laughs> the idea is to beat Turk's score in every challenge. All you gotta do is finish the level faster than I could've, and hey... <laughs> Good luck. For the on-foot jungle exploration levels, there's a speed challenge. The idea being to simply beat Turk's time reaching the finish line. And a trick score challenge, requiring you to accumulate as many trick move points as possible. Once you've beaten these, the ultimate super challenge is made available. It's time for Turk's super challenge, that's right! This requires you to beat the time and perform a number of trick moves simultaneously. And this is indeed a challenge. Trust me, this game is not the least bit lenient. These challenges made me literally go ape. The trick move controls sound simple enough, but I'll admit it took me a while to get used to them. For example, to perform a reverse slide, you need to hold R2 and push the left analog stick down. Now, I'm not sure if this is just me, but it feels as though the analog stick needs to be twisted into this position rather than pushed straight down. At first, I thought some of the trick move combinations were unresponsive, but it turns out I just wasn't performing them correctly. Another thing the game doesn't tell you is that Tarzan cannot instantly go from performing a sliding trick move to a jump, meaning I often slid off the end of a branch despite pressing the jump button. You need to finish performing your trick move before reaching the end of a branch, simply by letting go of R2. But at times, I made the mistake of pushing the analog stick forward again, which annoyingly made Tarzan perform a handstand instead. Tarzan, why would I want to do that now? Really? Stop monkeying around! And these sliding sections are painful. As I said earlier, these are hard enough to get through without performing tricks. Although I will admit I eventually got the hang of the controls. Ah, sort of. I'm still fairly terrible at it, but less terrible than before. As for the water ski and surfing levels, you still need to perform trick moves. But the time trial is slightly different. What? Here you need to grind on as many tree branches as possible to temporarily stop the timer. The goal being to beat Turk's time by reaching the finish line with enough time remaining on the stop clock. <laughs> Grinding on branches can be problematic though. I didn't have too much of an issue with this in the water ski levels, but in the surfing levels you're constantly bobbing up and down. And it's harder than it looks trying to land on a branch. 
Throughout the challenges, you not only learn new tricks, but you can also earn new playable characters to take part in the water ski and surfing levels. <laughs> Completing the first batch of challenges sees you rewarded with Jane, <laughs> whose running commentary is kind of amusing. Not too shabby. Woo! <laughs> and if that's not amusing enough, you also get to play as the old professor, <laughs> who's surprisingly a lot more agile than you'd think. Righto! <laughs> And finally, completing the last set of levels sees you rewarded with Turk, <laughs> who isn't nearly as vocal as I expected. Woo! Well, that's a bloody relief. There don't seem to be any other rewards for 100% completion, but personally, I think unlocking all the characters is rewarding enough. <laughs> Although, after the chore of having to beat every single challenge, I don't feel much like playing it again anytime soon. Woo! So even though I've gone to the trouble of unlocking these characters, I doubt I'll ever use them. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so I still much prefer the original PS1 Tarzan game, but while this game took me a while to really get into, I have to say it's really not a bad attempt. It's a departure from the usual cookie-cutter movie game platformer, and while the main game itself might be ridiculously short, the challenges are worth it. Some of the trick moves are rather awkward to perform, and it can get exhausting, but it's so satisfying if you manage to pull them off. Overall, it's far from perfect and can be very frustrating, but at the very least, it's definitely one of the most unique Disney games out there. This is great! Now that's what I call a swinging success. Surf's up, dudes. Do they still say that? Let's go surfing now, everybody's learning how, come on a safari with me. And now, an important announcement. Hey everyone! Okay, so first of all, to be clear, this review was based on my initial response to the game, and after playing it for a while now, I have to say I really like this. Once you get the hang of the trick moves, it's really addictive. So yeah, I enjoyed this a lot more than I expected. Also, I'm really sorry because I swear someone requested this game, but apparently I didn't make a note of who it was, which isn't like me at all. Maybe I imagined it? I don't know. Apologies if you did, just leave a comment below or something and I'll pin it. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to mention was my absence last month. Just to explain what's been going on, on, at the beginning of April, I recorded footage for an upcoming collab video, but we're not ready to work on it just yet. So I put it aside and started working on another video. I recorded the gameplay and got as far as editing my audio recording before I decided, you know what? I don't like this. So I decided to do this video in its place. There's a chance I might revive that video in future as I do like the idea for it, but I didn't want to upload something I considered inferior. So for now, I'm just gonna say it's scrapped. So yeah, last month was technically a productive month, but I don't really have much to show for it besides some gameplay recording. So, sorry everyone, April was a bit of a mess. It pains me since the last monthly upload I missed was way back in 2018. But I think we're on top of things now, so hopefully I'll be back at the very least next month, if not sooner. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.